Hey guys, so I was browsing a bunch of VC channels earlier tonight and I came across Chris Propfi's um, call out or request for uh, to name out five iconic logos from bands or artists. So I thought it'd be super fun to just hop on and, and make a response video. Uh, to be honest, I have a ton of energy to make these videos. I've gotten so much uh, positive feedback and words of encouragement uh, from fellow uh, VC members and others. So thank you so much to everyone. Uh, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Uh, thanks so much to Cosmic Vinyl, to Jam On Vinyl, and to Cinebro Supreme for subscribing to my channel. Uh, looking forward to getting acquainted over the net and uh, talking records because that's what I like to do best. So uh, let's hop right in. The first four out of five, actually, you know what, before I jump into the main five, there's one honorable mention uh, that I thought would be fun to talk about because I had six and all, and I thought, well, I'll stick to the rules of five, but I'll talk about, I'll say one's a, an honorable mention. And it is because it isn't as mainstream as the others, um, but it's still very, very iconic, especially if you're into heavy metal music, uh, and especially the rougher, rougher kinds. So uh, this is Death. Uh, scream bloody gore this logo i feel uh, i can confidently say that a lot of people watching this video have seen it many many times whether this version with the bloody skull and the upside down cross or the refined sharper version that they use later on without the, that stuff and just keeping the scythe um yeah so this is kind of an honorable mention so i won't stay on it too long uh death i love fantastic band uh i i love death metal um i like early raw death metal i like death Obituary, uh, Morbid Angel, uh, stuff for early way. I like Cannibal Corpse, I like that stuff too, but I like the raw earlier stuff, though this is right up my alley. Uh, this and Leprosy are my two favorite deaths. Um, this is a really cool original on uh, Maze, or sorry, Cobra. This is a, a Canadian press on Cobra. So yeah, let's move on. Next up, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the four. So this is what I was saying earlier. Four out of the five are extremely mainstream uh, and they're super iconic. Anyone seeing this video will have seen them before, whether on a celebrity's t-shirt um, or uh, in a parody of some kind or in a tribute of some kind. So uh, you won't be surprised, but they're iconic. So I thought I'd talk about them. The first is uh, Metallica. This red logo here, whether it be red or green or purple or orange, it doesn't matter. The, this this um, font uh, screams, uh, you know what this means. Um, Metallica is one of the most uh, iconic, the probably the most iconic heavy metal band of all time. And this logo is just as iconic. Um, this is a really cool, I could have showed any album. Um, I don't have them all, I guess, but I could have shown any that you have seen. I thought just for fun, this might be a cool one to pull out. This is a bootleg metal up your ass. Uh, the first seven out of the eight tracks uh, is the metal up your ass demo, uh, where the eighth track is the original uh, hit the lights from the first metal master comp. Uh, which has Lloyd Grant on lead, which is really cool. So this that's pre Dave um, uh, Yeah, so that's 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 awesome Metal up your ass and something else that's just kind of cool just to show you how self-aware uh, The label was that they were making boots is that they took uh, they've got this beautiful beautiful reproduction music for nations label um, And when I was a kid I bought it I argued someone for a good hour or two about how uh, no no this is a real one This isn't a fake, but no, it's fake Next up, we've got uh, Slayer. Slayer, this logo here, this angular, sharp, um, heavy metal logo. Uh, everyone's seen this, everyone knows what this means. Uh, one of the greatest thrash bands of all time. Uh, one of the biggest source of therapy for me for years and years to this day. Thank you so much, guys, for the almost 40 years of music you made together. Uh, sad to see you go, but glad to have you uh, uh, in music form, in, in vinyl form forever. So this is a really cool um, first press on, I think, Ro yeah, Roadrunner. Uh, it's Dutch, and I got a cool story to say to tell about this. Uh, a good friend of mine, Steph, used to run a shop in town called Mud River, um, Mud River Records. And when I was a kid, uh, whether I would walk or bike when I was 12 or 13 years old, I would gather up a fuckload of change in an oversized uh, Ziploc bag and I would stuff it into my jacket and I would go down to Mud River and hang out with Steph. Uh, and for two or three years, like in my infancy of discovering music, he was really a guru to me. He got me into Soundgarden, he got me into Slayer, he got me into Exodus. Um, so, like, 
we don't talk much anymore, but I cannot express more gratitude to you, Steph, for the years of good times that we had talking uh, about music. So anyway, back to the story and none of that sappy crap. Um, he, while he, in tandem with running Mud River Records, he would also have a booth at the biannual record fair that we have in town here. Uh, and he had this record for sale once. Uh, and so this is one of the first records I've ever owned. I bought this when I was 13 or 14. Uh, so Steph, I still have it, still in great shape. And I also have your the System of a Down Toxicity 7-inch that uh, you sold me to. So, uh, yeah, Mud River might not be around anymore, but Steph, you'll always be Steph from, from Mud River to me. So thank you so much. Next up uh, is the Misfits. Uh, kind of double um, iconic in the sense that the, the font of the band name... It's quite common. I wouldn't be surprised if they ripped it off of something else, probably an old monster movie or a poster or something. And the Crimson Ghost logo too, which is the main iconic part of their logo, um, isn't even theirs either. I think they took it from an old horror movie uh, from the 50s or 60s. But over the years, it's become uh, known, it's symbolic of the misfits, uh, whether it be on t-shirts or on uh, um, anything. I would say that the Misfits uh, rival KISS in terms of merch. I feel like when you talk about the Misfits, there's the music side and then there's the merch side. It doesn't take away from the music. Uh, I, like, I dig all their eras, um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of commercialization going on. Cool to see Danzig uh, and Doyle back in the band. Uh, I'd love to be able to see uh, one of those reunion shows, but I don't think it'll happen. Either way, uh, Misfits Rule. This is a cool uh, original um, German press of Evil Live on aggressive uh, rock production. Uh, super cool. And just, I want to demonstrate this or show you this here. Uh, this is Collection 2. It's a Greatest Hits comp that came out in 95. Uh, you know, here's the Crimson Ghost. It doesn't even say Misfits. This is it. Uh, and you're supposed to know, and you do know that it's the Misfits when you see that. So uh, this, I'll also say this is a wicked starting point if you want to get into the Misfits. Uh, the Danzig era, at least, which to 95% of the people is the, the superior era. Um, but it's an important part of punk rock history and rock music in general. So uh, dig it if you don't because you won't not. Um, the next logo I want to show you is Ozzy. Ozzy Osbourne, uh, you know, again, I guess kind of in line with Metallica and Slayer, very sharp and angular. Uh, this logo has been everywhere. Uh, you can see, you know, the Kardashian sisters wearing Ozzy Osbourne t-shirts on any given day. Uh, this is, I would like to have shown a copy of Blizzard of Oz. Uh, I don't have a copy of Blizzard of Oz, nor have I ever owned one. Not sure why I've never bought one over the years. I guess you just see it so much that whenever I had the chance, there was something else that came up. Regardless, this is a pretty cool uh, live EP that came out around the same time uh, as Blizzard of Oz. Uh, it's on Jet Records, it's Canadian Press. Uh, it's got cool versions of Mr. Crowley and Suicide Solution that are both live. That's cool um, because they're exclusive to this release for sure, but the studio versions are on Blizzard of Oz, so it's not as cool as uh, You Said It All, which is on here, uh, and for a long time was only available on here. So that's the main draw for this one. I picked this up probably for five or six bucks, so um, I mean, it's not, not something I was hunting after, but I'm definitely happy to have it. Uh, and also here, this is his new record. I really dig it. I know some people don't, and that's cool, but I like him. Uh, I have a soft spot for Ozzy. He was really uh, big in my form formulative years of getting into music. Uh, cool story about Ozzy. My father and I saw um, him play in Montreal with his band in uh, 2003, a couple days before I turned 13, and it was the longest concert of his career to date. Uh, like he, at the time and to date, he's never played longer. It was almost four hours long. It was a pre-Ozfest tour, uh, and it was what was really cool to me. I mean, that was wicked to see Ozzy, and the amount of stuff he played, like he played, I checked out the set list on setlist.fm, and a lot of the songs that he played that night, he either played like a few more times and then hasn't played since, or that was it that night. So that's like one of the coolest things for me, uh, in, in like my, my fandom. So, um, but yeah, so back to what I was saying, what was really cool in particular for me is I love Jason Newstead. He's one of my favorite musicians ever. By far the coolest cat in Metallica. Fuck the rest. Uh, he's the best. Uh, he's just the coolest. He just oozes cool and I love his playing style and he had such a hard time getting into the band and they gave him such a hard time. Uh, and when he left uh, in 2003, the band kind of became what he always wanted them to be, which is sad because he kind of was like a martyr for that to happen, and now he's not there anymore. Uh, but um, 
whatever. He, point of the story is he joined Ozzy's band when uh, Jason quit. And uh, Rob Trujillo, who was playing bass for Ozzy, joined Metallica's band when, uh, like, and vice versa. So when, we, so when I saw Ozzy, I saw Ozzy with um, Jason Newsom playing bass, and he was also playing bass for Voivod, who opened up, which was mind-blowing uh, to be able to see Piggy before he passed away. Uh, so yeah, one of the best memories of my life was seeing Ozzy that night with my dad. Uh, some of the best times of my life, for sure. Next up is, uh, this is not as mainstream, uh, no way, but uh, for in the punk rock world, I think it definitely is. Uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, uh, early singles that they were doing DIY, they supplied stencils that you could spray paint the name on. So by me saying that, you might already know who I'm talking about. Uh, who I'm talking about is Fear. Right there. You've seen that before, I'm sure. Uh, this is so, so good. One of my favorite bands ever. I know I say that all the time. Uh, kind of like Vinyl Rich says, fantastic all the time. I'll probably say every record is my favorite record ever because I just, I've got room for them all. Uh, this is a reissue that came out on uh, Slash, I thought it was Roadrunner, but no, it's it's a Slash one. It came out originally on Slash, and it, this is a reissue on Slash. It's nice, uh, 180 gram. It doesn't have a lyric sheet, which kind of sucks, um, but uh, I don't know if there's a band out there that I am craving reissues of their other material more than Fear. Uh, their three or four, no, three other studio albums uh, have hardly been reissued, if at all, and I think their last one that came out, uh, More Beer, uh, in 2000 hasn't ever been put onto vinyl before so uh, Lee if you're watching me uh, Reissue your stuff man, and I'll buy it all and let me show you something cool, too Just on the subject right before Christmas I picked this up at a shop in the mall I never thought I'd see this in my life, but uh, how wicked is that anyway fear one of the best bands ever check them out uh, can't go wrong. Oh yes, and I also want to show this. This is a cool little uh, Fear 7-inch. This is the first piece of Fear music, well, the one of two that I ever got, but regardless, I got it a long, long time ago. Uh, it's a bootleg of their first two 7-inches, so of uh, Now You're Dead and I Love Living in the City. Uh, so originally, when that came out in 78 or 70, 77 or 78, it was just those two tracks. And then a couple years later, um, either before or after the record I just showed came out, they released Fuck Christmas uh, on A side and then the censored version on the other. Anyway, this is a comp of those two singles onto one. Uh, really cool and uh, comes on a nice translucent green vinyl with this nice kind of essay um, that was about an interview, sorry, with Lee Ving. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I always found it cool when boot labels would put so much time and effort into their, uh, you know, counterfeit uh, releases, but uh, you know, I for a long time wrestled morally if it was cool to buy bootlegs or not. And I think at the end of the day, uh, the moment these this this shit comes out again or uh, easily, I'll buy the official copy. Until then, I'll stick with this. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Those are my top five plus the honorable mention. Uh, like my last video and the one before it, I'll show you what I've been listening to the whole time if you've been able to hear it. Uh, this is uh, PF Commando. This is a really cool punk rock band out of Sweden. Uh, reportedly the first Swedish punk rock LP ever. Came out in 79. It sounds a lot like uh, the Germs, sex, kind of like a Sex Pistols clone, or like uh, Heartbreakers, but faster. Not Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, but Johnny Thunder and the Heartbreakers. Uh, the, the better Heartbreakers. I love Tom Petty, but uh, Johnny Thunders has got my vote. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is really cool. This came out in 79, uh, scarce as hell, and then it was reissued in 2014 by Ugly Pop, which is a Canadian label, which is cool. I think 300 copies or so, it pretty, it's not, not a lot. Anyway, I got it for cheap uh, from a local shop. Uh, I dig it. Uh, the music's really good, like I was saying. The guy's voice really sucks, but he sucks in a good way. Uh, like, it's, it's almost uh, comically bad, but it fits. Uh, it's like off key and anyway, I, I dig it. It's not something I listen to often, but uh, I, I kind of pulled it out because I wanted to talk about it just to, for anyone interested in opening up their punk horizons or just looking at uh, some new music. So uh, thanks so much for listening to me ramble. Um, if my videos get too uh, frequent or if I rant too much uh, because I'm having a good time, let me know and I'll shorten them or whatever. But thank you for the support. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Uh, stay well, stay safe, and talk to you later.